Hello, my name is Aaron Letchman. I'm a professor at Georgia Tech. And this semester in spring 2020, I'm running my Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class. And a couple of my students are digging into the Prophet 5 voice architecture. So I thought I would record a video delving into it a little bit. This is going to be off the cuff, and I don't really have the time to do any editing on this. And really, the reason I'm doing this is we are currently in the middle of a pandemic. So normally, I would actually sit down the, with them in person and look through this. But alas, that doesn't seem to be uh, in the card. So I'm going to bring up the schematic, start hacking on it. And the goal here will be to think about ways that you might take this voice architecture, pull it out of the comfy confines of the Z80 controlled Prophet 5 synthesizer, and turn the basic structure into a module uh, for a modular synth, a standard analog module. So instead of having a computer with digital analog converters driving things, you could plug in external control voltages and start going to town. So obviously this wouldn't be a Prophet 5 anymore, it would be a Prophet 1, I guess, uh, but with everything dropped in. Now, um, the main thing we want to look at, this is actually page 19 from a manual, and I, I have this uh, up in GIMP right now in the GIMP software. So let's zoom in a bit. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's GIMP. Rem uh, now I have to remember how to zoom in GIMP. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is not exactly a schematic, but it does have chips. So... The block diagram here on page 19 of the schematic, it covers pretty much everything over here, over the microprocessor part that's driving it, but most of the actual core analog voice architecture you'll see up here in the upper right corner of this page 19 description. So we've got our two oscillators. These are 30 CM3340 chips. I believe these have been reissued by the original CM. I think it's now on semiconductor or something like that. Um, there's also some other companies that, I think there's one in Latvia of all places, that is making clones under the AS3340. Uh, the CM folks aren't necessarily happy about that, but, you know, you, you do have options. Uh, there's an extensive use of CMOS switches, these 4016s, because the original profit is microprocessor controlled. Of course, if we're building our own Analog module will probably replace both of these with just standard mechanical switches. Uh, there's, uh, let's see, oscillator A can drive oscillator B's sync input. So that's how you can get that hard sync sound. Um, that's kind of like uh, one of the Cars songs. Um, I think Night Life Baby, something like that. I forget what the lyric is. Anyway, um, there's a very famous sync uh synced oscillator sound that comes out of that. Uh, let us see what else we get. An uh, interesting thing is, although CM made... Um, sorry, I also have allergies today. <laughs> Great. Um, because... Um, C well, CM made um, some voltage control amplifier chips, but they don't seem to be used. Um, Dave Smith, the designer, seems to be using just 3820 OTAs. You could probably replace most of these with 13700s. And um, I think the 3280 may take higher max current on the control pin than the 1700. Might have to look at that later. Anyway, let's suppose you're replacing these with 70, uh, 13 700s. Uh, that, so we can um, mix in a certain amount of, um, I guess, I guess we've got sawtooth and uh, pulse wave out of A. Out of B, you can mix the sawtooth, the pulse wave, and the triangle, the triangle doesn't seem to be used up in here in the A. Down in B, you can get it. And um, the raw outputs of these waveforms are mixed together here and go through the 3320 low-pass filter, which was used a lot of since in the 80s. Uh, we have a final VCA. Ah, and we can pretty much stop here because, oh, it's interesting. The actual volume control on the Prophet 5 itself is a voltage-controlled amplifier, not just a pot. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, well, anyway, uh, so we'll pretty much stop here. And let's see now what can modulate what on this. So uh, white noise. Okay, so you can control the volume of the white noise. If we're making a module out of this, we'd probably just cut that here, uh, you know, or just make this an input. Wouldn't mess with the rest of this. Let's see what else we have. Oh, it uses a 33... 10 CM3310 envelope generators. Again, 
there are various companies making clones of this now, if that's your thing. And this sort of made sense uh, nowadays, back, back in the day. So nowadays you would probably have a microcontroller making things like envelopes. But back in the days, a poor little Z80 trying to keep up with everything, including making envelopes, was a tricky task. So it, it made sense at the time to offload it to uh, analog chips. Uh, the memory Moog does the same thing. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got some envelope generators, amplitude, filter. I think there's a third one in here somewhere. Um, I forget. We'll probably see that when we get the schematics. So this creates all kinds of stuff stuff and signals that go up here that get mixed together. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so it looks like the resonant CV that's controlled from the microcontroller will just, you know, make that some input. Uh, making a module, you'd probably put a mixer here and be able to mix some sort of front control panel knob with some external plug and input. Uh, CV, uh, we've got, uh, here's the op amp that's mixing the various signals that control the CV. Uh, what do we have? Okay, so one of them's from the envelope. Okay, that makes sense. Um, interestingly, I think oh, a whole bunch of stuff actually goes into forming the various filter inputs. So we'll come to that because I know that I believe one of these oscillators can actually drive the filter. So you can modulate the filter at audio rates. The uh, We also have a pulse width modulation input. Um, it looks like the one that comes for... for Oscillator B, that's just kind of set, maybe. Oh, no, there's, it looks like there's stuff that can modulate it as well. We'll come back to that. Uh, certainly, the pulse width on A uh, has all sorts of things that can modulate it. So um, it looks like we'll be able to have one oscillator modulate the other. So there's, there's a lot of different routings here. There will be some question as to what we would want to make a switch or what we would want to preset or what... Uh, in pure modular style, we might bring out to a front panel as a control. So with no further ado, let's switch over to looking at the actual schematics. Okay, so we're taking a look at the Prophet 5 and seeing if there's a way we could take the basic voice architecture and maybe make a modular uh, style synth module after it. As I mentioned in the previous video, I'm recording this primarily for my students, and if you're expecting a lot of polished editing, uh, you've come to the wrong place. Anyway, there's two schematics I'm going to look at here. One is from page 48, and this one we're not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at, but to figure out the context of the other schematic we're looking at, we may need it. So this schematic covers the various sample and holds that take the... Um, some place over here, there's a digital analog converter being driven by a Z80. And it's sort of round robining, uh, selecting various sample and hold type circuits to hold a voltage produced by those digital analog converters that is then sent to the various bits of analog hardware. So this would be a fairly typical kind of arrangement to try to save on the actual digital and analog converters themselves, which are fairly expensive. And if you're not changing these quantities very often, this is a perfectly fine approach. So it, this, uh, this is from page 48 of the service manual we found. There's some other part here on the right. This is kind of interesting. This is uh, actually feedback from the uh, circuitry of the, the, the analog generation circuitry, the oscillators in particular, back into the microprocessor. And this is part of the automated tuning uh, subroutines uh, that were coded and ran in that Z80. Now, of course, a, a standard module isn't going to do any of that. And one thing to know about the oscillators used in this and a lot of other 80 cents is that, like the CM3340 that's used here in the Prophet 5, is those are really intended to be used with the microprocessor. Uh, to handle these auto-tuning routines. So if you're using a module, okay, you might have to do an adjustment here and there. The one other thing that is interesting on this particular schematic is you can see here's all the voices being summed together from the different synths. And then there's a final um, volume control, which uh, very interestingly is not just a standard pot. It's actually a voltage-controlled amplifier formed with a 3280 OTA here. And here's, okay, so here's their end, adding them together. Now, of course, for what we're doing, we won't really need any of this, but I thought it would be good to see some of the context. 
Now, if we go to page 50 of the schematic, uh, this is where things get interesting. This is the actual, no, that's not page 50, sorry. That's page 19. That's that high-level block diagram. Go away, page 19. We'll uh, call you later if we need you. Okay, so now we're going to go to the actual page 50. So this is the main uh, architecture of a Profit 5 voice. And a lot of the things, um, let's see, what can we get away? I don't think we can get away with um, not looking at anything because this is really, this is where the circuit uh, gets down to business. Um, the circuit will get down to business. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, first thing to note down at the bottom is there's a bunch of 3310, no, there's not a bunch, there's two. Okay, so we have the CM3310 envelope generators, and these, I looked up on the data sheet, these produce an output of, I think it's zero to five volts, so that's something to keep in mind, because we're going to replace them. So the idea for an analog synth module for a big modular is we would be plugging in our own you know, our own inputs of various sorts from some our own envelope generators and stuff like that. So first thing I want to do right now is, uh, let's see, where does this amplitude envelope generator go? It goes over here, it goes up to here. Okay, so here's, oh, final VCA, there we go. So there's a 0 to 5 volts coming into this 33. This is a super primitive Expo sort of converter. So we've got a PNP, it's pointing in, and so there's going to be a, a voltage here, between he, here and here, and that's going to produce a exponential current flowing through it. And um, let's see, is that 33K or 3.3K? That would be good to know precisely. Uh, this is one, re uh, it looks like it's a, yeah, yeah, that looks like definitely a point. I will tend to write this, something like this, as uh, 3K3. You'll see that sometimes where the K is replaced with the decimal point, so it doesn't get lost. All right. So let's say here, what we'll do is we're just going to erase um, all of this input circuitry over here. Wait, where did you go? Come back here. Oh, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Sorry, that was not what I actually meant to do. I meant to grab, let's say I'm using GIMP here. So, okay, so the software that I'm using to record this Camtasia is occasionally wanting to, no, not Camtasia. I'm recording this with a Fireface 800 interface and the so occasionally insist on sticking audio back out here. Um, da, 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 tools. So we'll do selections, tools, rectangle, select. All right. So this is all going to go away. So we're going to make this go away and make this go away. All of this goes away down here. As I said, I'm not going to do a whole lot of any editing on this video. So if you're looking for that, sorry. Do, 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 do. I don't have the, I'm not a practiced disc jockey of the sort that can just randomly make mouth noises while in order to fill time between songs or whatever. Okay, so this whole circuit, this 3310 is going to go away. So it, it made sense back in the day when your microprocessors weren't terribly powerful and you didn't want to be spending a whole lot on fast digital analog converters that you would you would have a piece of hardware um, like the three three one zero to generate the envelopes. All right, so this one here, what we'll do is we'll say we'll put in a line. Let's see, do I have a pen tool or a brush tool, tool something like that? Okay, so I'm going to put in a line here, and we'll put an input here, and this is going to be um, for now. This is going to be VCA in, and uh, let's see, I, I really should get a graphics tablet, and for now we'll say. Whatever else we might put in front of here eventually, this wants something to be between 0 and 5. And to avoid having to think about this much, you might want to put in actually some uh, Zener diode or something, whatever circuit you build here, to make sure that that clips off at 5 at the top end. Okay, so there's our uh, control circuitry here. Um, let's see, this looks like... This, this is part of a voice, so this looks like a trim pot a uh, volume control trim pot sort of thing. Oh, you know what? By its so this oh, this is an OTA. So what this guy is doing is it's partially converting the current that's coming out of here 
into a voltage. Now to figure out what this is actually doing, we should probably take a look at where this feeds into. Okay, so here's H. Uh, so we need to go back to page 48 and take a look. Okay, so the voice outputs come from uh, one of these kinds of places it looks like, and they go in through here. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Okay, so something to switch there and not. Okay, so this is a mixing amplifier here. And, well, you know what? The overall structure is very similar. The overall structure is very similar to this guy over here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about us having a volume control on the output. It's just that VCA. Uh, so what we could probably do is we could just borrow... Yeah, okay, so they're, so the style they're using, so this is the final output, takes the, uh, this is after everything's summed. Okay, so there's a 20K here in parallel with 100K. That's, I don't feel like doing the math. You would put those things in parallel. Um, and then that's buffered by an op amp. And so probably let's, let's, let's do something like that. Uh, let's see. So if we put the voice in here, okay. So this is interesting because coming out of the OTA, you would get that to ground, and you would get this to. Uh, that's not a virtual ground. Um, hmm. Do I have to think about this? I don't feel like thinking about it. All right. So let's do this. Let's just say for now that eventually we might come back. You know. We, uh, sorry, that's the mixer. Um, I could try to think about it, but I don't feel like it. So let's do this. Uh, here we've got this pot. This is just say this is no longer a pot. What we'll do is we'll um, get rid of this guy. Uh, where's my tools? So this is, well, we're not getting rid of the resistor. We're just turning it into a pot. So for right now, let's take this. And, oh, I want, did want to keep it said 25. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of this. Uh, blah. Okay. Um, get rid of this. So it is, oh, why don't I do this? So what I'll do is I'll take this 25K, yelp, and I'll copy it and move it over here, yelp, uh, flatten image. Okay, and what we'll do, uh, don't do this on me. Okay. There you go. And uh, what we've done is I've just turned this into just a standard resistor. The current will flow down here. And what we'll want to do here is, um, ah, no, I don't want any of that. Go away. So instead of the audio output here, this is going to be buffered with some sort of op amp. So we'll, um, no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm used to using PowerPoint when doing lectures, and so the hotkeys here are different. So what we'll do is, uh, like we, like on that page 48 we just saw, we'll take the output of an op amp, put it into the input, stick it like that. Okay, so the OTA is generating a current. That current goes down through the resistor, which turns it back into a voltage because there's no current flowing through here, and I'm assuming it's an ideal op amp. And then this buffers the voltage, and that's our actual out. Okay. I do have a graphics tablet that I inherited from my father, which I really need to hook up and learn how to use. Uh, do we want to bother with all of this? It might as well. Might as well. Wouldn't hurt anything. We'll go ahead and leave this little trim circuitry in here. That probably trims to make sure to uh, get rid of DC. So the next thing I want to do is look at what's happening in here. So there's this thing called PMOD that winds up showing all over, up all over the place. This is a whole bunch of various modulations of pitch. And whatever this PMOD signal is has two purposes. One is to feed all the way back to up here where the oscillators are. So this PMOD signal can modulate the pitch of um, oscillator A or um, oscillator... Yeah, let's see. Okay, so this... Ah, uh, okay, so there's a whole bunch of things that happen. One is uh, the PMOD signal can change the actual pitch, and it can also, let's see if it goes through here, can change the pulse width. Uh, let's see if it does that for 
B. Let's see, it doesn't do that so much for B. Uh, I think it's because this P mod, uh, part of the thing it constitutes is the output of B. So you can use the output of B to modulate either the pulse width or the pitch of A. So the other thing that does happens though with this P mod signal, as I mentioned before, this is, I'm going to post this unedited. So if you're looking for something fairly polished, you're in the wrong place. I'm just putting this here for the benefit of a couple of my students in my analog circuits for music synthesis class in the spring 2020 semester. Normally I would be telling them about this in person, but the coronavirus has messed that up a bit. All right, so uh, that PMOD signal also goes through here and modulates the filter, which makes sense. You usually want the if you're doing something in the pitch, you would also want the uh, filter cutoff to track that so you don't get a drastic change in timbre, overall timbre, uh, as you change the pitch, unless that's something you wanted for whatever reason. Okay, so let's work our way. Um, <clears throat> allergies. Anyway, so here's the frequency controlled input of the 3320 um, filter chip. That's the, VC, uh, that's the VCF chip. Uh, ah, so here's something interesting. The way to think about what's happening here is I have an op amp that's holding this uh, through the negative feedback. It's holding this tr negative terminal here at the virtual ground. So the way to think about voltages that are coming in here is this resistor is taking those voltages through this resistor to the virtual ground, turning them to a current. And the job of this resistor you know, take that trim pot and add that resistor, it's a resistor, right? Its job is to take that current and then turn it back into a voltage. Now, because the voltage is over here, it also inverts. But notice because of this structure of basically what you have here on the right is it's turning current to voltages. I can also just jam current sources in there. So an OTA outputs a current. So there's a current coming out of this OTA and it's going to go up here and this will turn it back into a voltage. So I can mix inputs that are of a voltage kind and things that are of a um, inputs that are of a current type uh, equally well in this mixer if I just careful about how I weigh things. Oh, sorry, I think I just whacked the mic. Um, anyway, okay, let's see if I even, I even want to keep this. So I have a filter envelope generator here. This is controlling both that P mod signal to modulate pitch, or I guess pulse width is another thing it does. And also it goes through here to modulate the filter cutoff. And we have some OTAs here that are basically, these are uh, amplifying the the signals coming out. It's, it's, let's see, these are scaling the envelope. So this one here is determining how strong the envelope affects the, uh, uh, the uh, P mod signal itself. And then after it's affected by that, there's yet another uh, modulation of the, or change of whatever the effect of that amplitude is on the, uh, oh, actually, no, it's even just the whole thing. No, wait, sorry. Okay, let me back up. All right, so the envelope is scaled by this control voltage. And that is, um, oh, look at this. So we have to be very careful about erasing things here. So this P mod here consists of two current sources. Uh, there's one from here, this OTA, and there's one from another one. The current from both of these is getting added together, dropped down to this resistor, and then getting buffered. So this resistor is turning both of those into a voltage. So that's really interesting because what it means is if I want to keep all this stuff over here but still get rid of this envelope because we'll assume someplace else is in the circuit, we've got other places to plug in our envelope signal and other modules or scaling, uh, scaling like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of all of this. But I want to keep this resistor here. So he's going to get scooted. I'm going to take him and I'm going to scoot it up here. Because this is turning this current back into a voltage. I need to have him around. I can't get rid of him. All right. So uh, let's just try to clean this up a bit. Do, 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 do. Okay. And um, so I don't need this envelope generator in, anymore. And wherever this envelope generator is going, let's see. Okay. So this is 
determining how much of it is affecting, uh, is getting fed into this filter cutoff itself. That's kind of interesting because notice it's kind of separate from the fact that it's also affecting the PMOD. You can you could have controlled those both separately, which is interesting. Although when it go gets mixed in here, it also then gets affected by this. So that VCF sort of, as it's getting to the filter here, it's kind of counted twice in this complicated way. Anyway, okay, so I, I'm get, getting rid of all that, getting rid of all this, getting rid of all this. Okay, so I've got rid of uh, the envelope generators. And these here, um, let's see, what's going into my filter? These are outputs from the sample and hold. So those are coming from the microprocessor through a D-Day converter and through some multiplexers and sample and holds. And looking at the D-Day converter, I haven't looked at this in depth, but the D-Day converter... It has like a minus 15 volt supply at one point, but it also has a five volt peak. Or I mean, it's the the DDA converter is run off of a five volt positive supply, so I'm going to assume that uh, these are input signals that max out at five volts. And we can we can put some here. Okay, so we're going to make a couple of these be our inputs. Um, so we'll we'll grab my uh, little pin here, and uh, so this is a, a filter in. And uh, F for filter. Here's another input. Uh, one of these you might want to make a, say, 0 to 5 volt with a um, pot, maybe. Uh, another one you might make 0 to 5 volt. Uh, or, or you might have an input, just an input jack, and then maybe have a potentiometer deciding how much that jack affects it. And you may have one that's where, okay, here's another 100K resistor. You could just jam it in. So you've got... You've got plenty of opportunities. Yet again, I need to get a, a drawing tablet. Um, let's see. The, we have this switch here that determines... Oh, one other thing I want to mention here. Most modular equipment runs off of a 1-volt per octave standard for pitches, which is relevant here for the filters, for the cu cutoff as well as the VCOs. Now, who knows what the voltage... Per octave, volt per octave standard is for inside a profit five. It probably shifts around at various places. And you could try to puzzle it out by looking at the VCO data sheets and looking through the extensive, amazingly extensive service manual that you can find online. Or probably what I would recommend doing would be to build it and then try going zero, one volt, two volt, and then maybe twiddling some of these resistor values to get it to match that modular standard. But to get sound out, this should be good enough. We have this switch, uh, CMOS switch controlled by the microprocessor to the see how much of this PMOD, rather this the PMOD signal affects the filter itself. Oh, so you could do crazy things. You could have this running at an audio rate, uh, oscillator B here, and have that modulate the cutoff of the VCF at audio rates. And that's really pretty awesome. So let's see, what should we do here? Oh, a bunch of stuff in here. This is really just kind of stuff. This is really meant to handle some of the weirdnesses of sort of the limited voltage range of the 40, of the, the CMOS switch that they're using. But uh, I don't think it would hurt anything to leave that in there. Um, would I hurt anything to leave that in there? I don't think so. Uh, so with some caveats, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the switch. Uh, there's a clamp here being provided by that diode, probably to stop things from getting naughty inside the CMOS switch. But I think, I don't know, I would want to go back and probably think about this more detail at some point. You could just replace this reg regular switch. Let's take that as a default position. Um... Whatever's happening over here, th this guy here is being held at a virtual ground. So you've got this clamp here. Whatever happens over here, I don't think it really much matters. It's not going to hurt this, right? This is still being held at a virtual ground. So I think that's okay. So we'll have a switch here that indicates rather the this PMOD signal affects the filter. We'll leave in all this uh, trimming circuitry here. Uh, you'd want to leave in these trim pots. Eventually, you might want to change these around to get volt per octave goodness or something. Um, all right, so let's go back further. 
and uh, see where else this goes. So where does this come from? Um, uh, okay, so now we... Uh, okay, at this point, let's go ahead and go back and look at the oscillators. So if we're going to go back to... Uh, let's just keep going. So let's see. We've got uh, the output the audio output of the 3340, the sawtooth, and the pulse wave here, they go through a couple of switches to CMOS switches to determine, whoop, sorry, to determine whether they're added up in the final output or not. Now notice this is a separate switch. They do have, oh, I see why they're doing this. There's a mix amount control that controls how much of this total mixed output of the square and the sawtooth wave is. And whatever you add together out of here, it's controlling the volume of all of that. Now, I actually should go back and look at the Profit 5 manual. I don't know if it lets you actually turn on both of these. Maybe in software it turns this one on and turns that one off or vice versa. I would have to go back and look at that. But either way, uh, let's let's assume we might want to do that either way. Sure, let's mix it. It'll, it will work fine with this, with this setup. So what we'll do is we'll replace those CMOS switches with a uh, pen here. Let me grab my pen. So this is just going to be a mechanical switch in the new regime. And, okay, we've got 10K here. Let's not think about him much. Anyway, so basically we have an OTA that is taking these voltages, and this is now acting as a voltage-controlled amplifier. You have this uh, divide-down ladder of 150K and 330 ohm because OTAs go non-linear with a hyperbolic, at least if they're BJT-based, which is something like it. Most of the ones I or I should say any of the ones I know about that people use in synthesizers have BJT inputs. They're going to have a differential pair at the front that will give you a hyperbolic tangent nonlinearity. Now, uh, some circuits will kind of, I think, they, they tend to poke into that nonlinearity a little bit and give it a subtle bit of distortion, not giant guitar amp crunchy kind of distortion, just a little bit of juice. So this is designed to cut down whatever the voltages are here, so you're not really pushing too hard into the nonlinearity. Uh, let's see what controls this. Oh, this is just directly controlled by a CV coming out of um, the microprocessor. So it looks like this isn't subject to a huge, a lot of variation, uh, various modulations. This is just you set how much you want this in the output. Okay, and they have to use switches here because they're not... They don't have separate VCAs to do that. Um, okay, so it makes sense that we would have switches here. And if we really want to go with the feel of the way the Profit 5 voice works, we would probably want to keep this VCA and then uh, make this, whoop, we would want to make this a, ah, that is not what I meant to do. Uh, we want to make this some sort of input. Now, if if we really wanted to treat this as a usual VCA, what we would want to do is we would want to put in some sort of exponential kind of characteristic, like we have over here. Um, maybe that would be the right thing to do. Notice for the notice that for the um, Profit Five being driven by the microcontroller. They, they're just putting in a voltage. So this is a linear VCA, uh, but it's not a big deal. But what we might want to do here, let's see, if that's 3.3K, oh, you know what? And it's 3.3K, and it's going into the filter, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so a current is coming out of here. So this guy wants a current input, or is this turning into... Hmm. I would have to go look and think about what the input of... Oh, you know, the 3320 is weird. It is... If if you look at the way people discuss it, people will talk about it like it's an OTAC filter, like um, an SSM 2040. But the 3320, the gain elements in it are strange. They're not like anything else I've seen. 
and they have some weird. I don't know the one. A lot of the schematics I've I've seen. I I felt like had some weird biasing. You know, like there's a minus fifteen volts here. Like why is there a minus fifteen volts here? So there is something weird about the way the whole thing is biased. So we would probably want to maintain a lot of this. Um. And not mess with this too much because I don't understand in a lot of detail how this works. But, you know, the control input here, probably this whole circuit is designed. So this OT is probably used for the full range. So what I would probably do is I would probably take this whole setup here. Um, let's see. Let's take this whole setup. Oh, that was weird. Change colors on me. Um, and let's call this... Uh, I don't know what do we what do we call this? Uh, I don't. Let's call it smiley face. That's going to be our little circuit. So, <clears throat> to match the way people using a modular synth, if they're used to it having an exponential control characteristic, you could take that smiley face circuit I just made and copy it in here, right? So, the reason I'm re erasing the three point three is it's same thing as uh, there's a three point three over. There's a 3.3 .3 over in here. All right, so uh, uh, am I happy with that? Uh, you can always change it. I'm just brainstorming here, right? Okay, so we'll put our smiley face here and uh, change that. Uh, whoop. <coughs> All right, so so what else we got? Uh, ah, now notice we've got a similar structure over here. Um where the triangle and oh so for b in terms of what gets mixed up and put into the filter uh okay so first so this is the voltage controlled amplifier that's handling the mixing of the various waveforms coming out of b and we could do the same thing so if you felt like you had a reason to just do linear control here you could do that but Let's uh let's have fun. Let's uh put our smiley face. Uh oh. Yeah, okay, that works better, I think. We'll put our smiley face circuit, our our really super cheap X converter there. We could do some sort of you could change that. We could do something different. Anyway, let's see what goes into it. Okay, so like above with A, we've got we have uh CMOS switches controlling rather the Sawtooth and the pulse get mixed in. Okay. Uh, you know, the, this 10K on the pulse, that probably has is some sort of pulled out. I bet you that's some kind of pulled out-ish thing. I would have to go look at the 3340 data set sheet. Because notice the sawtooth doesn't need it, but it looks like this guy does. Anyway, uh, let's do the same thing we did before. So we'll just replace the... Whoa, I need to go fix... Wow, that was nuts. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my mail there. All right. So I'm going to um, replace this with a CMOS switch. Ah, come back here. Oh, um, there we go. Sorry, I don't know how to use GIMP. All right, so this is now going to be a CMOS switch. Uh, switch. Um, this thing here uh, will also... Re Sorry, it's not a CMOS switch anymore. We are replacing it with a mechanical switch. So I'm going to go forth here. Mechanical switch, mechanical switch. Mechanical switch. All right, so this is going to determine whether we mix in the sawtooth and the pulse. And the other thing we need to mix in here... Oh, this is interesting. I think I... Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think I remember reading this. I think the sawtooth and the pulse are probably positive going signals. And I think the triangle here goes positive and negative. And they're running it through a... They're running it through one of these CMOS switches. And I think these CMOS switches 
um, can only handle running positive. Or maybe, forget, they're doing something clever in here that takes this, shifts it. What are they doing? So is this positive, and then they want to turn it back into positive? Oh, okay. I think what they're doing here is this comes out just positive going. I think that's what they're trying to say with this little symbol here. And we could turn it on or off, and then they shift it because they want it coming out of here to be both positive and negative going. Okay, so we do want to keep the circuitry because if we're using the triangle wave here to modulate stuff, we want it to go, uh, we want it to be able to swing positive and negative. Whereas for just straight audio, you know, that can kind of do whatever and that's probably going to get DC blocked somewhere later down the line anyway. All right, so that's what they're doing. So we do need this level shifting circuitry, but we can replace this here with a good old fashioned mechanical switch. So let's do that. Uh, drip, drip. Mechanical switch. Let's put the mechanical switch in there. All right, uh, there's another CMOS switch up here I saw that we should take care of. Oh, well, this one's very important, isn't it? Um, we have, so this is from the microprocessor saying, do you want to hard sync? Uh, so we've got, it looks like the output of B goes into the sync input of A. So you can sync um, A to the uh, sawtooth output of B. Uh, let's see what else we need in here. Um, let's see. Oh. Huh. Do I know what's going on here? This is this is interesting. So the sawtooth output of B is fed into the base here. And the the triangle wave here is not entirely unused. It goes into the emitter here. And then the base here is going up to the sink. And this is ah, there's stuff going on here. Um I would have to go look at the data sheet and probably spend a lot of quality time with it and do some editing to figure out how that's working. Um, let's just assume we need all of this for the sync to work correctly. And we'll just uh, replace the CMOS switch with a mechanical switch to the side if we want to turn on or off the uh, sync, this uh, sync functionality. Yep, okay, so that's another mechanical switch. We uh, replaced some CMOS switches. Uh, we uh, borrowed this very primitive Expo converter and put it in a couple other places. And um, so with that, uh, let's go over to the left part of the diagram and see what we've missed. The main thing I want to track through now is what happens to this pitch modulation signal. If this doesn't make any sense, go watch the preceding videos. Also, as I've mentioned before, I'm recording this for the benefit of the couple of students working on a project related to this in my Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class, Spring 2020. Normally, I would do with this with them in person, but we have a coronavirus pandemic. So when I'm recording this, I thought I might as well upload it to YouTube to see if it's useful to anybody. Hopefully it is. Probably isn't, but whatever. All right. So this pitch modulation signal goes... Down here, it comes up here. Ah, and here's where it comes into and can influence. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So it doesn't go back to oscillator B. That's something we've seen before. It comes back to the CM3340 oscillator chip. Uh, it has two possibilities. One is it comes up here and goes into the pitch input. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, the same thing as before. Um, there's a diode clamp before here. Oh, this is interesting. They're running this off of minus six volts, six volts. Well, I guess they sort of have to if it's going both directions. Or, wait a minute. They're probably doing, this is doing some weird biasing thing. I don't want to think about it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of this. Oh, and you know, because there is, mm. oh, this is AC coupled. Is this, so it's like there's a pull up to 15 that's DC, but this 470 to ground 
that's only going to pass um, higher frequency signals. How should I interpret that? I'm just not. So <laughs> I'm just going to take this, drop this here. Let's drop this here. Probably would be a good idea to go back and look at the 4016 data sheet and just try to figure out um, what goes through it. Like, like, does it matter? How, how, how does this, what's going on here? I think there's some discussion about it in the, uh, in the service manual to the Prophet 5. But for now, let's just uh, get rid of all this. I'm going to put a question mark next to this diode, next to the clamp here. Um, so let's put a question mark here. Question mark. All right, there's a question mark. Anyway, let's assume we're replace, just replacing this with a switch. Again, I'd want to go back and look at the data sheet, maybe read the service manual and try to figure out what's happening with this particular scheme. But um, hmm, we'll call this close enough. Okay, so let's replace... What does this one do? Oh, so this that one handles pitch. This one takes that modulated... It takes the uh, triangle wave out of oscillator B and it puts that into the pulse wave modulation input, which is why you see different circuitry around it. This is going to expect something different. Um, okay, so we have two sources here. Uh, one of them is a uh, one of them is the triangle wave from part B. Oh, right there. And I'm just replacing this with a switch. Again, that might be something worth thinking about further. Let's just do it. Do it. Okay. Um, so there's two things that contribute to the uh, pulse width modulation. One is coming from the, uh, the CV, uh, the, the microprocessor through the digital analog converter. And let's see, this is a this is acting as a general mixer. So coming out of the triangle wave of oscillator B comes in through here. Uh, what I would probably do, hmm, what I would probably do is I would make a resistor. Eh, let, let's assume that it's okay to add another modulation source here. So I'm going to put 100K here. So let's make this an input from the outside world. That's probably wanting zero to five volts. And inevitably at some point you would want to sort through all this and figure out if some edge case condition will create some voltage that would make a chip unhappy. <sighs> I have here all of these lines. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. Sorry. Um, and then what I would probably do is I would put a pot here, uh, put the wiper to the middle, Put the top here to five volts. Uh, probably, if you don't have a five volt handing in your circuit, you could add another resistor to the top here and put uh, 15 volts or whatever you're running everything off of. This is all probably 15 volt plus minus 15 volt, except for like the CMOS switch thingies. Uh, put the ground here, right? So now I've got a ground. And so you could set a bait, you could just not plug anything in here because this is operating as a mi voltage mixing node, mixing this voltage, this one, and this one. Uh, if you didn't plug anything in here or, or, and you weren't using this, you could still set the pulse width using uh, this guy here. And I'm assuming that the rest of this is all scaling this to get the appropriate range for this input. So that's probably how I would handle that. Um, what other kind of cleanup things do we have to do here? Um, oh, actually, let's go look at the pitch input on the VCO. Um, so I'd probably do the same thing. Have one of these just a straight input. Have one of them be a... Um, some sort of pot to, from some voltage. Um, here's how, how, how do I want to... Um, probably want to, okay, let's just assume that we can go ahead and put in another 100K resistor here, right? More inputs the merrier. As I mentioned before, I really need to uh, try hooking up the graphics tablet. Um, so one of these I would make just a input, right? And then you could probably, I don't know, change how you scale these later. Again, I don't know 
the the internal volt per octave convention of the Prophet 5 is probably not one volt per octave, which is what you would expect for modular. And then I would probably put some sort of pot and then probably have some fixed resistors, right? You would fix a resistor here and probably fix a resistor here. And you would choose these. So if you did this from, say, minus 15 to plus 15, wow, that's really terrible looking, um, you would get some appropriate voltage range so that a person using this kind of circuit as a modular could just go up there and turn the pot and go wee, 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 or no, woo, 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 or whatever. Um, and then I would probably want to add a, a modulation input that instead of just sticking right in there, had a pot that you could use to control the amount. So I would actually make this also be an input, make that an input. And then by using a pot here between that input and whoop, <laughs> by using a pot here between the input and ground, you could then control how much of an influence that say LFO you put in from another source was. Let's see, what else do we have? If I go down further here, um, same thing. So all the stuff I just said for part A up here, uh, all of this kind of circuitry, you should just, uh, you know, copy. So, yeah. I would copy this. Let's copy it. And uh, take this little extra circuitry, and then I would paste it. Uh, paste it down here, right? So we'll paste it down here. So if we're turning this into a modular, then a user could... Um, oh, there's two inputs here. Right, I would turn one of those. Right, same thing. Okay, so one of them I would leave as a straight input. One of them I would make be uh, a pot that lets you just change a voltage here. And then I would, oh, sorry, now it's 3.03 a.m. Then I would put in another resistor that would have a pot on it. Sorry, I'll put another resistor that go to a pot that goes from ground to at the top, some CV input, and you could control the influence. And uh, let's see. Oh, uh, there is one more thing you need to do, which is to handle the uh, pulse width here. Um, at this point, I think you've got enough flexibility in the various inputs here that I would say, I would probably at this point say, instead of trying to make this all sorts of inputs, huh? well, the thing is, so to figure out what's happening here, you would really need to go, you know, you would build need to build something appropriate. Uh, if you wanted to do this kind of quick and dirty and just, you could make it an input, but you don't want to have a situation where the user always has to plug something in to say, just have it work and get a square wave out. So again, I would probably use one of these things where you put some resistors in. Uh, since they're taking this direct from a CV, I bet you this guy is zero to five volt. You would have to go and look at the three, three, four, zero data sheet and then make sure being very lazy and sloppy here. Uh, but let's suppose for a second that was the case. So you'd probably put 15 volts here, and you would... Uh, well, you know, if you're building a profit 5, you have a 5-volt supply. Um, if you're building this as a module, you probably just have 5 volts running around. And So you take 15 volts, run it through, just drop it down. Here's a pot. Use this wiper here to pick a voltage going into there. Um, let's see, what else is in here? Uh, We've cut down quite a bit, but this is still a big, pretty complicated circuity thing. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, maybe just for clarity, let's get rid of this output here. That's well. So this is the audio out. This goes to the auto tune circuitry in the Prophet Five, and we're not using it, so we might as well just get rid of that notation on the schematic to avoid any confusion of thinking that might need to go somewhere. Okay, so let me save that there. Um, let's see what else we've got here. I'd really want to go back and think about what's going on with that diode. Um, let's see, it looks like the rest of this is pretty essential, essential uh, to the profit sound. Oh, what should we do here? Okay. So... Most of the other places we have OTAs. Let's see where else we have OTAs. So we have one that's being used as the VCA. That we're using voltage to 
um, voltage to current exponential converter in, in a very, very basic form. This isn't something that you would be putting into your uh, very basic form. This isn't something that you would be uh, using in a voltage controlled oscillator. But the ear is not as sensitive to volume changes, not nearly as sensitive as it is to things like pitch changes. So it's less sensitive. And we use the exponential converters here because these are acting as VCAs on an audio signal. But down here, this is being, the VCA here is being used to modulate the amount of a modulating signal coming in. And that modulating signal that's coming out either is going to the pitch input or in one case it's the pulse width, but let's just talk about the pitch. The pitch input on the 3340, which has an exponential converter characteristic built in. And from here it's going into the input, uh, the frequency cutoff control of the 3320, which has a frequency, um, it, it has an exponential converter built in. And so this guy here, it's really, if you're driving this with an envelope or something, you're trying to change the amount of modulation. And that to me feels like it should probably be a linear control. Um, if you're in a hurry, you could copy and paste one of these exponential controls because then you don't have to think about it. Um, yeah. So probably... You'd want to do something more sophisticated here, um, especially if you wanted to have more than one. Yeah, well, hmm. So probably what, I, what I'm saying is here is if you're in a hurry, make it an exponential control, um, but probably you'd want to think about putting some linear control because you could you could theoretically just put a, um, put a, uh, just put a jack here. It would be a terrible idea, but you could. And just say, okay, we're going to put 0 to 5 volts into here. Now, if you started to go beyond that, you might run the risk of blowing out the OTA. These do not like having too much current put into them. Um, but probably the better thing to do, and, and probably this is, mm, you'd probably want to do the same thing up here too. Now, these things you might want to put in some sort of Zener clamp or something so that this doesn't try to go nuts. Um this doesn't go nuts with the current. So this is a little sloppy. If you're using it with a, um, you know, it's a digital analog converter that can only output zero to five, that's one thing. But if this is really coming from the user, you would want to put a little more protection on this probably to make your OTA feel cozy and safe. And um, same, thing down, same thing here and same thing here. Now on all of these things, uh, rather you, I won't dig into it anymore, rather you put a nice linear current source here or an exponential source. Uh, the way I've set all of this up is you would have to have something jacked in here. Uh, same thing, you would have to have an input here, input here, input here. So probably, probably what you'd want to do with all of those is use some sort of uh, input stage that does something like what I did over here with oscillator, where you've got some signal that uh, goes in and maybe there's a knob to indicate how much that changes or how much that control voltage in impacts it. And then you might have a, uh, another control voltage getting mixed in with that. That is a pot that's just going between the, you know, a couple of voltages that you just sort of use a knob to set a baseline. And that way you don't have to jack in a, uh, signal in, in order to start getting sound out. So, Eve, so considering the things you would need to add there, um, and considering all the stuff we removed, uh, this is a still a fairly ambitious uh, project um, to make a module with all of all of all of this stuff in it. Now, of course, one thing you could do is uh, there's no reason all of these things have to be tied together. You could easily make a sep module that's a a couple of VC, uh, a VCO and have two of those and, you know, hook them up with sync inputs or whatever and um, get some VCAs, a whole bunch of VCAs. Uh, you'd want to make sure you could get ones that could pass, uh, make sure ones that could, could pass, you know, low, um, low frequency signals, but you, you can do that. 
You could have a separate voltage-controlled filter, certainly a separate voltage-controlled amplifier, and you could patch all these together. You could patch them together and emulate <coughs> sorry, the uh, voice architecture of a Prophet 5. But part of the fun of this would be to have a lot of Dave Smith's design chops in terms of what's the most useful connection that you then as a musician don't have to think about, oh, do I want to put the output of the filter in the VCA? You know, it's a very natural setup. So you could patch in your control voltage for the pitch, and you could turn some knobs and sound would come out. And then you could start patching other modulation sources. So you could make it could potentially make an analog module for a standard modular synth that was sort of quasi-pre-patched and um, had some of the, besides the sonic characteristics, just some of the overall design flavor of the Prophet 5. And if you spend any time with modular synths, you know that it can be pretty overwhelming. Uh, great things about modulars is, of course, you can patch anything into anything. But the problem with modulars is sometimes you can patch anything into anything, and it can become overwhelming. So having having sort of a somebody like Dave Smith who sat around and thought about what's what's a very not minimalist, but what's a useful set of patches. Um, a, a useful set of uh, combinations to choose from that isn't too overwhelming, but let yet still gives you uh, ability to get a lot of sonic variety. And so that's the general idea. Um, oh, one other thing. Ah, I knew there's one other thing I wanted to look at. Uh, this noise input, if you look at the um, where that comes from, on so this is page 48 we have been looking at page 50 uh this is where all the um various demultiplexers for the um digital to analog converter creating all these control voltages comes from uh, also i think a bit of terminology is um some of the things you i've been talking about as coming from the D to A, I don't think that's entirely right. Come think of it. The things that are SH, labeled SH, are coming right out of the sample and hold. The things that are labeled CV, I think are sometimes mixed in with some other stuff. Like there's a whole uh, other set of circuitry um, having to do with the mod wheel. And if you look in the Prophet 5, there's another 3340 just sitting by itself. That's the low frequency oscillator. So somewhere that's, you know getting mixed in with the various control voltages that we were using. I still am going to guess that starting with 0 to 5 volt as a baseline as to what most of the control voltages are is a reasonable thing. Anyway, um, besides all of those muxes and this final summer and the final volume control, which, as I mentioned before in earlier videos, is odd. It's an OTA. Well, I mean, it's not terribly odd. Um, but that tells me the, the final volume on a profit is under microprocessor control. It's not... Um, you know, after mixing all these voices, it is not just uh, just a pot. So, oh, here's the noise. So this is a noise source chip, and it goes through, unsurprisingly, a voltage controlled amplifier to decide the amount of noise, and that gets fed into. So here's some audio that's going into that noise input. So probably what you do here is you want to you want to what just put the noise. Um, you know, if you have a noise synth or yours on your um, synth, you can use it. But I think a more useful thing here would be just to have an audio input. So I would just put a jack here and put audio in. And uh, so you could take, instead of just the oscillators, you could take some other audio signal and mix it in. And a lot of synthesizers have this. Um, you know, the in addition to, if, if, if you get any sort of um, mono synth today, there's usually a place to patch in an external audio signal so you can filter it, even if you're not using all of the oscillators. And I think that's it. I think that's all the main points of this I want to hear. And the way I say that, it might give you the impression that I started with a, um, a thoughtful set of points on how to approach it. And um, you probably figure out that's not actually true. Uh, this has been entirely improvised. Um, if that was not educational or useful... I at least hope it was fun, and if it wasn't fun, I hope it was educational and maybe useful, uh, something like that. I won't push too hard for use, but maybe fun, maybe educational. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, sorry about all of the coughs and lacks of edits. Uh, I'm doing this on a 
Thursday night, and I really need to get to my students soon, and to get to all the other students who need help with their projects. Uh, I'm doing this because this this was an unusually um, ambitious project that normally I would shy students away from. It's a couple of students who are going to split up uh, the work on the schematic, and we'll probably even from here uh, simplify this down further, but I wanted to use this as a starting point. Thank you very much.